you guys before. I've always wanted to be able to lactate. And today, my doctor, after my EKG results, said that she's feeling confident enough to start me on this medication, Reglin. I would love to help a family, you know, that can't breastfeed and does want the milk and has the option to have transgender milk. Trans women in breastfeeding. Can trans women breastfeed? Should they breastfeed? What are the health considerations for both the trans identified male and the child who is receiving the breast milk? What does the literature say? What do the major perinatal health organizations have to say? We'll take a look at that and more in this next episode of A Slightly Tisted Female, hosted by Brittany Rue. <laughs> My mom, no, I'm a demon. It ain't nothing she could do but pray for me. Well, all right, let's take a look at the questions. Can a trans identifying male breastfeed? Men can breastfeed. Men can produce milk. They can lactate. We are mammals. We start off prior to the SRY gene being activated in early in utero development of the fetus. We start off as basically sort of like a unisex thing. Then the SRY gene, which is on the Y chromosome, when the egg is fertilized into a zygote, at a certain point, the SRY gene activates the anti-malarian hormone, which stops malarian structures from developing. What are the malarian structures? That is the uterus, that is the fallopian tubes, all the female reproductive internal genitalia. Why do men have nipples? Well, because prior to that, we, again, we had sort of an asex, an asexual uh, body type, a phenotype. So, you know, uh, any male mammals will develop to have uh, nipples. However, these are not breasts. And the pituitary gland releases estrogens that will develop the breast tissue in females. And if you've noticed with nipples between male and female nipples, females typically have larger nipples. These are to allow the baby to properly latch and suckle. This has an important impact on baby's mouth and palate formation. That's something that we'll talk about more. Male nipples typically are very tiny. They are not suitable for direct latching. Can men lactate? Yes, they can. We've seen men that have tumors on the pituitary gland that have caused them to lactate. There is also uh, a phenomenon in late stage starvation. We've seen it uh, in, in you know wartime where men on the battlefield who were starving began to lactate because the liver is not... Uh, metabolizing hormones uh, as effectively. Now, are these normal, typical occurrences? No, of course not. Obviously not. The more appropriate question is, can they sustain breastfeeding? Can a trans-identified male or can a male sustain a newborn infant via stimulated breast milk? So now that we have the rise of the sort of trans craze and with it, we have a whole horde of onogynophiles who are lining up and desperate, clamoring over one another to be the first to breastfeed their baby, to use their baby as a prop, uh, to engage in their fetish publicly and online. So let's now, let's look at some of the considerations. The CDC, the Centers for Disease Control, has written a statement saying that Men, trans-identified males, also known, colloquially known as trans women, uh, should be allowed to breastfeed, should be supported to breastfeed, that it's, it's healthy and it's safe. Let's take a look at the science behind those claims. Now, if we are to look at the cursory statements given by organizations like the American College of Obstetrician Gynecologists, don't forget that on November 3rd, 2023, we will be taking action outside of the American College of Obstetrician Gynecologists to demand that the ACOG divest itself of gender ideology or else the U.S. divest itself of ACOG. La Leche League, which is a breastfeeding support group, uh, Lamaze International, uh, Childbirth Education 
uh, consortium and you know, the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control, which is a government organization and oversight seeing body that oversees disease concerns and, and public health. You would think, yeah, there's no problem whatsoever with a trans woman breastfeeding the baby that their partner had or that they uh, acquired in some means of adoption or otherwise. But is that so accurate? But wait a minute now. Psychology Today and many other clinicians acknowledge the existence of something called a uh, lactophilia or the sexual fetish around lactating. And we do know that according to Ray Blanchard's theories of gynophilia, one of the major branches of gynophilia is the bodily functions, meaning that men who are erotically aroused, sexually aroused by the idea of acquiring the female bodily functions or the bodily functions of the female body. So are you saying that Lamaze International, the CDC, ACOG, uh, and Lo, uh, the Leche League are participant in allowing paraphilic males to engage with a lactation fetish? This lactation fetish has led many women to engage in something that's known as lactation prostitution, where desperate women make their breasts available for men to, for men to suckle on. I will not apologize for who I am. I will not apologize for what I need. I will not apologize for what I want. I ain't even gonna cap. Oh, hell no. I said, uh-uh. Nope. Uh-uh-uh. That's disgusting. Damn, so how'd you get back home? You had the Uber? What you mean, my boy? Oh, no. Got, Got to, to see, see it through, my boy. boy. God. It's really concerning. A lot of young mothers are getting involved in this, young single mothers. And of course, never to be ones to be left out, trans women want to get involved. And we know that trans women have extremely high rates of prostitution. And they are excited to offer this new, uh, you know, fun, exciting, you know, female process of lactation. And who's paying for it? Is this medically necessary medical care? Stuff that's going to be covered by Medicaid? Is this, is this life-saving transgender health care? You know, is this, is this going to prevent trans-identified males from committing suicide? How much money do we have to shell out for this nonsense? And why is it that we have long withheld our, you know, eagerness to co-sign and state as safe other you know considerations because oh well, we don't have enough information we still need more research we can't definitively say yet when it comes to a trans women wanting to breastfeed well sure yeah we have some few cursory studies that say it's fine it must be fine but is that true let's take a look at the studies now the studies do seem to overwhelmingly acknowledge that yes men can lactate and they can we've known that for a long time um, then why is it then when I was studying to be a New York Department of Health breastfeeding educator as well as a Lamaze certified childbirth educator a donor certified childbirth doula a NARM eligible uh, home birth midwife and you know, still birthday bereavement doula and I've worked heavily in the birth world why was the information that I was given and again this is circa 2011 that while men can technically be stimulated to lactate there's not enough information to say that this lactate is safe and there are too many considerations about the drugs that would be needed to stimulate lactation that was what was understood as I was being trained fast forward now 10 years later we're touting from you know the the high hills that it is safe, effective, and totally reasonable. Do you have a minute to talk? Yeah. You know, early on, we had a little hiccup with not wanting to sign a gender of sex to the baby. You know, mom is having a really difficult time with, like, not assigning a gender of sex to the baby. Having a baby. I am very unprepared to give birth by myself. Something's coming. Something's coming. Oh my god. 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 Oh my
The baby has been able to latch, but I've not been able to produce any milk. It's okay because we're gonna supplement the feeding with formula so that my baby's still getting the, the nutrients that they need. I appreciate you so much for all your work. And I appreciate you also, baby. I couldn't have done it without you. Mm -hmm. So I took a look at the literature myself. I wanted to see with my own eyes what is being said and what is being found. And it's first and foremost, the design of these studies is really concerning. These are case studies involving, in some scenarios, one participant. So we already have very poor study design. 2018 was the first time that a piece of scientific literature demonstrated that a trans identifying male was able to stimulate lactation and then subsequently gave that lactate to their baby. Uh, 2021 is the next time that we saw that. So the second documented case. And since then, we've seen many more. Uh, what I found concerning with the literature, now the literature does state, yes, it's possible. Again, we've known that. What I found considering was the weight, the disproportionate weight given to uh, when breaking down the sort of, you know, benefits of this breastfeeding relationship and why it should be fostered and, you know, why it's an important thing that we help develop in men who have, you know, either autogynephilia or these homosexual transsexuals, is that, is that it's a very gender affirming experience. That concerns me that we are using neonates, infants, as sort of a prop to help affirm the gender identity of what is, you know, fairly potentially, you know, mentally ill men, right? So I, I don't know that that is, should be a primary consideration and, you know, really a consideration at all, but certainly not a primary one. There are many ways for fathers to bond with their babies. And of course, while we sit there and give all this weight to the gender affirming experience of breastfeeding a baby, there is absolutely no mention of what it is potentially doing to the mother is the assumption that the mother just doesn't want to breastfeed her own baby because from in my experience a lot of mothers do want to breastfeed they don't have the proper support uh the financial support the social support to adequately do so but they do additionally we know that one of the benefits of a mother breastfeeding her neonate is the antidepressive effects that it has. It can help a mother regulate her hormones to begin to lose the weight that she had put on to gestate the baby and to properly bond with her baby, but also regulate her hormones that will have an impact on whether or not she will go on to develop postpartum depression or even worse, postpartum psychosis. We know that breastfeeding can be a very critical uh, preventative action to keep a mother from developing depression. So when we're handing those opportunities away to men, why is there no consideration for the sort of impact that this could have on the mother? Uh, breast milk is based very much on supply and demand. It's a use it or lose it sort of thing. So for every missed feeding, this is why we say as you know, lactation experts and as breastfeeding supporters, we always say that it really is best not to supplement if you are trying to achieve and maintain a high supply of breast milk. It really is best not to supplement those feedings with artificial milks or, you know, some other source because every time you miss a feeding, your milk supply will begin to scale itself back. The more you breastfeed, the more your body will produce milk. The less you breastfeed, the more your body will begin to, uh, there will be a milk cessation in milk production. So every time that this man, a father of whatever, is taking away a breastfeeding opportunity from the mother, he is taking away, you know, an opportunity for her to developing milk. You know, the father would need to be breast pump 
pumping milk and breastfeeding around the clock. So we have a mother who's re recovering from childbirth. Another thing that breastfeeding does is it helps the uterus begin to contract back down to size. That's why we always say that, you know, if a mother is bleeding, if she's having difficulty getting her uterus to contract back, we always say it's important to put the baby to the breast. It will stimulate uterine contractions. Um, so, you know, there, there is an ecosystem. The, the mother is completely left out of the discussion that I've seen in a lot of these, you know, scientific cohorts and whatnot. Uh, and, and there's a huge overemphasis on the gender affirming, you know, benefits, of course, to the man. What, let's talk about the child now. Let's, what does the science say about the breast milk itself? Well, it seems the milk that is pumped from the nipple of a man does seem to have within range the correct macronutrients that you know, we would hope to see. Things like lipids, fat, protein. Um, but is it perfectly identical? Well, I don't think we can say. Why? Because we still don't know exactly what is in breast milk across the board because if we did we would be able to synthesize an artificial milk that is identical and a perfect replacement for breast milk and guess what we have not and cannot do that when we are pumping men full of hormones so that they can induce lactation you have to understand exogenous hormones will never ever be able to orchestrate themselves in harmony with what a natural hormonal you know orchestration would look like why because hormones fluctuate from day to day hour to hour perhaps even minute to minute the breast milk composition at the start of a feed is different than the breast milk composition at the end of the feed. And how is this regulated? Through the mother's production of natural hormones that, you know, the ebb and flow as is necessary. At the beginning of a feed, breast milk is high in water content, which is to quench the thirst of the infant. And towards the end of the feed, it's very high in fat content. And the high fat content of post milk or later milk in the breastfeeding session helps the baby feel full when a man is taking exogenous hormones he is not able to replicate these sort of of sort of personalizing the feed for that baby right this is something that only the mother's body can naturally regulate we don't know i mean it is is with great arrogance that we assume to know exactly how mother's body is at work in concert with their baby the baby that they gestated and grew for nine months that baby upon being born already recognizes the voice and the smell of its mother it can identify its mother versus any other person in the room uh, and it'll move towards its mother and it'll naturally move up towards the breast. Another consideration is the nipple. A male nipple is tiny. It's difficult to latch. I'm surprised that any of these men can get uh, an infant to latch, and especially with um, this, this one TikToker who has risen to fame because he's used his infant as a uh, a sexualized prop. Yeah, you are you are good to breastfeed your kid. Uh, essentially, I just had a conversation with my doctor where I was like, hey, I'm gonna be working to induce lactation to be able to breastfeed my child. Is there anything I should be concerned about, be aware of, anything I should know, anything we should test for? She was like, oh, given all like, like given all the medicines you're taking, that's all good. I'm gonna go ahead and do like a double check with the WPATH standards for lactation in trans women. Oh, W Path. Would that be the same W Path that investigative journalist Genevieve Gluck exposed for participating with a fetish site and whose top members are part of the Eunuch Archives? A site that hosts hundreds of thousands of pieces of written literature depicting the abuse of children. <laughs> that same W Path? Yeah, they're reputable. Let's go check in with them.
And that's the thing. The well is poisoned. These doctors are checking in with organizations that are already politically tainted and tied in with the trans lobby. Don't you understand? The well is poisoned. It's not like, oh, well, we checked in with WPATH. We checked in with the CDC. Yeah. Hello. Hello. They're the ones who are pushing this trans craze. They're, they are literally colonized by trans activists. Yeah, checking in with them, of course, it's going to say everything's all good. That's all good. I'm going to go ahead and do like a double check with the WPATH standards for lactation and trans women, see if there's anything that we should be aware of. And she got back to me and was like, everything looks good. You know, I've never actually seen him breastfeed. It always looks like he's using the breast pump. And I would bet my bottom dollar that he is not able to get that baby to nurse and suckle. It's, this matters, too, because suckling at a human breast is the optimal way to help develop the palate and the tongue and the sort of jaw strength uh, and muscle coordination of a baby, which can actually have later impacts on their later speech development. This is why, you know, even artificial nipples are not a good replacement for female nipples, Right, it is not, we cannot just easily replace the mother's body and what it does with just any, you know, sort of cheap imitation and expect that the outcome is gonna be the same, it's not. Okay, but again, is the milk, you know, seems to have the macronutrients and, well, not exactly, because it does seem on average that the milk of a man is fattier in content than the milk of a woman. And having too much fat can have deleterious impacts on the baby's insulin levels, blood sugar levels, uh, you know, overall health and well-being. And again, a baby of that age, a young infant is so fragile and it is so important that it receives these, you know, nutrient in the proper balance. This is why you don't give water to infants. Waters can throw off their electrolytes and send them into cardiac arrest fairly quickly. We taking a look at the drugs used for stimulating breast milk in men. On July 19th, 2023, two U.S. Senators, Bill Cassidy and Roger Marshall, penned an open letter to Dr. Cohen of the CDC, the Centers of Disease Control, challenging the decision of the CDC to post a guidance, nearly two pages worth of guidance on trans breastfeeding or chest feeding in which they advise that doctors uh in which they advise that those who have had breast surgery can continue to lactate and uh, breastfeed with the use of medications now there are no fda cleared medications for currently on the market period none every medication used by trans medicine, trans identifying people are off-label uses and some are recognized as dangerous off-label uses, chiefly and primarily domperidone. Domperidone, which is given, originally had been suggested at 10 milligrams for women to incre increase their breast milk supply, is now being given to males at 30 milligrams. It has been shown that it is not effective to use domperidone in women and that there are no known safe levels. And at 10 milligrams, it is not, cannot be shown as safe and potentially there are adverse effects. So testing had to stop because there is no ethical way to continue to test this medication in pregnant populations without doing potentially irreversible harm to the developing fetus. So why then are we giving 30 milligrams? If 10 milligrams wasn't safe in women who are already equipped to lactate and breastfeed, why are we giving 30 milligrams to men and telling them that it's okay that they can enact their fetish with the child? Hi, I'm Abby and I'm transgender. I'm at the doctor's office. See, doctor's equipment. I am getting a checkup for the Ritalin that I'm on for lactation. I have to check to see if there's any unnormal heart rhythm and see where it's at. Last time I was like 4 or 12 or something. And if it's over 500, I uh, have to stop. But maybe I could keep going with pumping since I already started lactating. And, um, you know, and I get the new pump 
on the second. The two, two point. I wish I had the Halo 2.0. No, the Willow 2.0. I wish I had that. If anybody's got one, oh my god, please send it to me. I would love to have it. Um, but the ones I'm getting, they're going to be a little bulky, but they're, you know, hands-free. I get to walk around and uh, get things done and pump. Whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> so I just wanted to check in, give everybody an update on where I'm at on my lactation. And uh, stay tuned. I probably will do another update tonight about my lactation. Thank you for following me. Love you. There are, this is an off-label use. Doctors can get in trouble for prescribing it this way. Yet the CDC, in its advisory about trans breastfeeding, links to, uh, to a breastfeeding organization that talks about doctors should help patients acquire drugs to induce lactations, transgender patients, what is going on here? Thank God they were called out on the 19th. While the CDC is sitting here touting male lactation is a safe and wonderful thing that we should you know, all be so supportive of, what it fails to acknowledge, we don't have high quality, long-term studies to show that any of this is safe. Just because on the onset, it appears that there are, you know, it, it, it has some similarities, you know, just because the macronutrients seem to match up properly, does not mean that we're seeing the whole picture. I think not by a long shot. We're not even, you know, really scraping the surface. Um, but again, you're robbing the, the mother of an opportunity to breastfeed. And also, how about the fact that this is a time, this mother just grew this baby for nine months. You have to understand, it is so essential that a mother and a baby has adequate time to hold each other and, and to almost heal from the separation of, of being pulled apart, from being one, a mama toto, which is this concept that a, mo a pregnant mother is really one being with her baby that's inside and then when that baby's born and the cord is cut and the placenta you know it peels away from the uterine lining it's this it's a separation that yeah I mean is a necessary and integral part of you know growth of family development but it still can be traumatic it can still be, you know, somewhat something to grieve. And I think part of the bonding time is a time to grieve the sort of separation, but to celebrate this sort of new connection that we have as two beings. And when a dad feels his need to insert himself and to sort of, you know, he needs to be the center of attention. He needs to become the sort of, he, he's jealous and he wants to be a part of it and he wants the attention and how about you focus on your role which is to provide a safe and protective environment for the, mo the mother of your child and your child to bond and so that the mother can heal reason why mom really needs to be at home and should not be forced to rush back off to work immediately or to rush back into the world and she should she should have a safe and nurturing environment to transition properly into motherhood is because of the influx of new hormones and, and the re-regulation of of you know from going from pregnancy hormones to immediate postpartum hormones and then you know to a non-pregnant state it takes a lot of time and it also takes a tax and a toll on the mother's you know mental physical and and emotional well-being while this mom needs this time to bond with her baby imagine now you you know a man theoretically the father doesn't have the same sort of hormonal tumult that the mother is going through. He's supposed to be the sort of like clear headed, like able to sort of handle the the demands of the world to that it's necessary to provide and to maintain stability. He needs to be the rock in that moment, something for her to lean on, to fall back on while she's, you know, able to go through this very natural and important process. You know, so I'm not, uh, this isn't to disparage mothers that go, look, they're all just crazy and hormonal. No, it's a beautiful time, but she needs that, that, 
you know, she's going through a lot. There's this beautiful storm that's going inside on inside of her of life and life giving and and birth. And a man is supposed to be this rock. And and now he's got to go and be a clown and start, you know, to, like participating. So now she can't depend on him to be this firm you know, presence, the stabilizing factor in their lives for her and her new baby. Now he's taking these hormones and it's probably making him all over the place. How selfish, how selfish do you have to be? So the conclusion is, is male breast milk the same as female? No. Oh, and another thing to remember is that men simply are not able to produce enough breast milk. We have never seen a scenario in which a man who was able to stimulate lactation, lactogenesis, was able to provide enough milk to solely sustain that baby. I think on average, they make something like six ounces a day. You have to understand that when a baby picks up, you know, breastfeeding, uh, it comes to a point where they need between like two to three ounces every few hours, about eight times a day. That's nowhere near enough to sustain uh, a growing child. And again, again, the mother's natural hormonal orchestra will augment itself to meet the needs of that mm -hmm. baby. So for example, the mother of a premature child, guess what, will produce milk that is actually personalized for the needs of a premature baby. Our bodies are that brilliant that they can recognize that we didn't gestate the baby long enough and the baby probably needs milk with higher fat and nutrient content. And guess what, our breasts will provide it. As the baby grows, the milk nutrient content changes over time to meet the needs of the baby. That's because our hormones are in this constant flux. This constant change is, an, again, an orchestra where it changes and it meets the needs versus exogenous hormones that are just being pumped at a constant rate just to squeeze out whatever we can. Can we technically get men to breastfeed, uh, to lactate? Yes. Is it the same? No. Does it, you know, would it be something, for example, maybe in some, you know, uh, like in Ukraine, if there were people who were cut off from aid for a long time and there was neonates who had immediate needs and perhaps there was a way to stimulate a man to breastfeed because, you know, the mother had died or was injured or sick and she wasn't and there wasn't a stable uh you know, artificial, you know, milk supply, that would be a scenario where I'd say, yeah, it makes sense to that we know that this is possible and that we utilize this for, as a short term solution until we can get that family to safety until we can, you know, that that family can then access uh, a, a better environment. But but to do it for the sake of affirming a trans-identified man's gender identity so that he can engage with his fetish and use the child as a prop and then totally disregard the emotional, physical, psychological needs of the mother that just carried that baby. I think it's absolutely sick and insane. And, and no, no, wrong. Don't forget that on November 3rd, we will be meeting outside the American College of Obstetrician Gynecologists headquarters located in Washington, D.C. to tell them enough. We demand that ACOG divest itself of gender ideology or else we demand that the U.S. divest itself of ACOG. The only women are mothers and only females are women. We said enough, enough of the gender ideology, enough of the spin. Bring back maternity care for mothers, for women. Save our language, protect our spaces. Come join me, Friday, November 3rd, 2023, from 2 to 5 p.m. outside of ACOG's headquarters in Washington, D.C.